We're here at CES 2018. We're actually going to drive around with Connected Signals. Peter, tell us about Connected Signals. Well, Connected Signals has spent uh, much of the last uh, nearly decade connecting uh, traffic lights to cars. So we have relationships that we've built with cities over that time, and we're going to be demoing a little bit of that technology today. Excellent. Well, let's uh, check it out. All right, here we go. So the first thing I notice there's a little app and it's giving us uh, some driving information like our speed. Yeah. And uh, what we're going to notice when we get a little bit closer to some of the traffic signals is uh, some information that we provide uh, about the signal. Uh, what color it currently is, how long it's going to stay that color, and um, if we have any other predictive information it will be displayed on the app. Um, when we get up to speed, it's a little bit harder to do at CES with the traffic, but It'll also give speed guidance. Um, so uh, a little arc will show up and it'll give you an indication of how fast you have to go to make the light on green. If you're gonna miss the light, uh, there'll be an indication related to that. So there's a lot of opportunity for uh, fuel savings as well as safety implications. Uh, so what you're seeing here is a countdown to the straight and what just popped up is the countdown to the left turn. We're pretty far back from the uh, intersection itself so it's probably not going to apply to us but if we were to a complete stop and traffic weren't moving we could kill our engine and we could save a ton of gas that way um, a lot of different applications for start stop are clearly um, present here BMW has investigated different instances of that so we saw the countdowns actually disappear um, around the convention center there's a lot of different tailoring going on to adjust for traffic flow uh, so it's not unusual to uh, periodically lose a countdown. Um, and right now we're just waiting for the next light. Uh, just before the light changes for the straight, we're gonna get a ding indicator uh, that'll let us know that it's time to drive. If we were closer up, um, it would give us a clue, hey, it's time to drive, focus on driving. And there the light changed. You can't quite see it from back here, but the light up there changed as well, corresponding to it. And um, it's, it's a great technology. It really gives you an opportunity when you have those 50 seconds of time between when you need to be focused on driving and when you don't to take care of things that are little annoyances and make you a less safe driver. Uh, that could be removing a jacket, finding something that was dropped. A lot of the things that you might do while you're actively driving that are very unsafe, we provide a window and an opportunity to do those things in a much, more, in a much safer and much more structured uh, environment. The 99 plus there, what does that indicate? What that says is um, the next time that those lights are going to go green is at least 99 seconds out. Okay. So in Las Vegas there's very large blocks and as a result they have very long uh, red wait times. So uh, what we found, I mean now we're down to 96 seconds, if the uh, uh, when the prediction's there, having 90 seconds is a tremendous amount of time. It gives you an opportunity to do many things. I'm going to put the car in park right here. If I turn the car off, I just saved 80 seconds of idle time in gas. Uh, a number of OEMs have explored this and found um, 8 to 12 percent increases in fuel efficiency when cars are hooked up to the traffic light infrastructure. Um, we are currently conducting a study in Phoenix, Las Vegas, San Jose, and Portland, Oregon, uh, where we're testing the efficacy of that claim. We have also heard 20% um, fuel savings. So we are exploring whether or not people are safer drivers when they're provided with the information, whether or not they're smarter drivers, and whether or not they're driving more efficiently. So how will you uh, tell if uh, someone's safer than they were before? So we're performing, uh, part of the study is uh, establishing a baseline of how an individual will drive originally. And then once we provide them with additional information related to the traffic lights, we'll better understand how they've adjusted their behavior. So an individual that sees a green light and guns it to try to make it to that green light might change their behavior once they know they've already made the light. If they know that they can safely go the speed limit and still make a light, they're much less inclined to speed because they don't need to speed to get there. We're about to um, approach uh, some lights that have uh, parking lots associated with them. And parking lot lights are kind of the bane of any sort of analysis that one might do. 
there's a lot more variability associated with parking lights put with parking lots because you have pedestrians crossing you have cars coming in and out intermittently and as a result they're a little bit more difficult to predict so this lights an indicator of that there are actually no predictions showing up that doesn't mean that there are never predictions here but because of the environment and the vehicle calls or you know the cars that are waiting and queuing up we just don't have the same information to do a prediction that being said just prior to the light changing color there's an indicator that says get ready to drive and we've figured out over time with the data we've collected that the way that lights go when it goes north and southbound on at the same time and then east and west if you understand the way that that logic operates you know what light is going to go on next so here we have a light that i've already missed doesn't matter the speed that i go to get there mm. i'd have to go way slower to actually hit it yeah. when it turns green and the reason for that as i can tell is there's a left turn coming our way so they're going to get the light first we get to go next and i'm already out of the range i wouldn't have hit that light unless i slowed way down that uh that's really cool and now we just wait for the ding and immediately following five four three two one and there we have it so let's talk a little bit about the technology uh, tell us how this works from a, a traffic light uh, process okay so connected signals takes in um, a huge amount of data uh, related to a traffic light and over time we're able to understand how it behaves in different environments if there's cars going in one direction we understand that over time that means those cars will only wait 45 seconds with that information we can feed it on to the phone and the user and anybody else downstream that uses our API. Tell me uh, about the equipment that you have to install. So uh, the only equipment that's required is a smartphone. Uh, we are available on iPhones as well as Android and we've also integrated with um, an OEM as well and the app is free. We make the, we take, uh, we provide the data through city relationships free of charge. We have a device that we're distributing and we're making available to cities free of charge and um, ultimately there's nothing but upside. It makes drivers safer, it makes them more efficient, um, and it connects traffic signals to people. And that device at the city, they just install it in their central command and then it just feeds uh, information about the traffic signals to your device? That's right. Uh, it, we collect the data from the centralized devices and we figure out what the lights are doing around us. Excellent. So now being part of the study, how does one get uh, to be involved in this study? Okay, uh, if you're interested and you live in the Portland, Phoenix, Las Vegas, or San Jose uh, area or within the city, uh, go to www.connectedsignals.com forward slash studies. So what about the data of the person? Um, yeah, there's, there's often a lot of concern about anonymity. Um, nobody wants to be tracked. The data that we provide, we don't hold on to in any sort of a, a single person way. Uh, we look at the data as a whole and we understand how um, drivers as a whole behave differently. We're not interested in you going to Walmart at 10 o'clock at night to pick up Twinkies. That's not what our concern is. We really just care about making you a safer driver and making you a more efficient driver. From a consumer perspective, uh, I think you alluded to this. One of the benefits is uh, you kind of uh, can you tie it to a mapping type program so you can get the best route as well? So the open API that we've developed, uh, we can make available to anyone. And if they're going to do routing, they can do routing. Uh, originally as the company, we started out and we did routing. And it turned out Google was much better at it and they had 10,000 times the people to do it. So uh, we have done routing and the routing that we did was we would only hit, we would hit as many green lights as possible. Um, there are definitely applications for the most fuel efficient drives, the fastest drives, um, all taking into account what the traffic signals are likely to be doing. But, but it's an open API, so that gives you the opportunity to really open it up to the world um, of possibilities. That's right. Um, the API is very specific to traffic signals and it's um, easy to put on a back end and that was by design. We want people to have the data we want this data out there because it's going to benefit everybody. Yeah, from a city perspective, they can really start to understand how their infrastructure is being utilized, right? That's right. And they also have a lot more um, probe vehicles. More probe data lets them better understand how the traffic signals that they have are working and how they think they're going to work. 
Now we just had a ding there, and that's only associated with the straight. The left still has 17, 16 seconds left before it's going to change. Um, just prior to it changing, it actually disappeared, but it's still going to blink before. Prior to it changing, we're going to hear a ding that's going to remind us to get ready to drive. So, so it seems like this could be, uh, it replaces multiple use cases for dedicated short range communications. Yeah, that's right. Um, a lot of the trouble with DSRC is um, the limited range. Uh, you're really only looking at the light directly in front of you or maybe a few lights away. But when you're concerned with routing, you really need a much larger scope for uh, what, what it is that you're looking at. And the difficulty with DSRC is it's much more immediate. Um, it's a lot more expensive to install. Right now, Connected Signals is working with the existing infrastructure that's already installed in Las Vegas and any of the other cities that we use. We use the current infrastructure. We don't add anything. Um, we have our free device that we're distributing, but that's the extent of any additional hardware that gets installed. From a business model perspective, how will Connected Signals make money? Well, we have the API. Uh, a lot of OEMs look for very specific characteristics of that, and we develop it for them at a cost. Uh, also, uh, the probe vehicle data that we can provide is very useful to insurers that are interested in finding out where are drivers more dangerous, where are they tending to run red lights, where are they tending to speed up and then slow down really quickly. Those are the drivers that they're more concerned about insuring because they might not be the safest drivers and they pose a bigger liability for them to insure. It seems like your application could replace the uh, OBD type device that insurers are sometimes using now. Well, uh, we definitely see that there's some um, synergies to be had there. It's an opportunity for insurers to better understand how people function at intersections and to use that metric as a measurement for how safe a driver they really are. Um, we see it as supplementary. We don't see it completely as a replacement, although the data that we could be getting from drivers would be very similar to that which they would get from the OBD ports. Well, Peter, I really appreciate the ride and the uh, tutorial on how Connected Signals works, and good luck with the uh, trial, and, uh, and we'll uh, be looking forward to trying it ourselves. All right, great. Thank, Thank you. you. It's good to meet you. Likewise. Take Thanks. care. Thanks. Yeah. yeah.